Hello everybody, welcome to iExambi. Embrace the iExambi learning experience. In this video today, I am going to do a detailed comparative analysis between Bharatiya Saksha Adhiniyam and the Evidence Act. You might already be knowing that the new criminal law bills have been passed by the parliament and have also received assent by the president of India. They have not yet been published in the official gazette, so they haven't come into force. In this video today, we are going to have a detailed discussion of what changes have been brought in the Evidence Act by the introduction of Bharatiya Saksha Adhiniyam 2023. Before moving further, I want to talk to you about a workshop that Amrita Ma'am is conducting on Sunday 28 Jan at 12 pm. In this workshop, she will be discussing Bharati Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita and CRPC, a comparative discussion, detailed comparative discussion on these two acts. So if you want to join this workshop, you can register in the link that is present in the description below. This is your PDF of detailed comparative analysis of Bharatiya Saksha Dhiniyam and the Evidence Act. You will find this PDF in the description. You can download it, keep it with yourself so that you are able to understand these two acts quickly. Let's start. First of all, we'll see comparison of the two acts and overview of the parts and chapters. Earlier, part 1 was called relevancy of acts. Chapter 1 was preliminary, chapter 2 was of the relevancy of acts. Now, part 1 is preliminary, part 2, chapter 2 is relevancy of acts. Then you have part 2 which is on proof in the evidence act. Here, that is shifted to part 3. These are all the chapters that are present in the part 2 in Evidence Act and these are present in the Bharti Saksha Dhinam. You will see most of the chapters are common are same. Similarly, part 3 in Evidence Act was production and effect of evidence which is now part 4 in the Bharti Saksha Adhiniyam. Almost all the chapters and the names are same except one chapter in the end of Bharti Saksha Adhiniyam which is repeal and savings. So, this is a general overview. Hai. Now, let's move ahead. Detailed comparison and mention of the changes introduced. Here you will see first column is Indian Evidence Act, second is Bharti Saksha Dhiniyam and the third is the changes which have been brought in that section in that provision. Starting with part 1, chapter 1. Here you have section 1, short title, extent, commencement, section 2 was earlier repeat. This section 1 again is short title, application, commencement. It shall, however, come into force on such date as the central government may by notification appoint. In this chapter, in the extent of application, Evidence Act applied to court martials, but there was specific mention that it applies to court martials other than the ones convened under Army Act, Naval Discipline Act, Indian Navy Discipline Act, and Indian Air Force Act. Now, this other than provisions have been removed. Now, Bharti Saksha Adhiniyam applies to all court martials. So, this change has been introduced in the section 1. Then, section 3 earlier was interpretation clause which had major definitions. And section 4 had definitions of may presume, shall presume, conclusive proof. Both these sections have now been clubbed in section number 2, definitions. Also, the definition of India has been removed. Earlier, section 3 had definition of India. Now, the definition of India is not there. Also, minor changes are there in the definition of document and evidence. And here, you can see the changes mentioned in orange. Document means any matter expressed or described or otherwise recorded. This term was not there. Upon any substance by means of letters, figures or marks or by any other means or by more than one of those means and includes electronic and digital records. Similarly, in the evidence, information given electronically is also added and statements ke saath information word bhi add kar diya gaya hai, electronic digital records. So, you can see here this document will give you a very detailed comparative analysis and you will be able to easily memorize the changes and also attempt major questions that may come from the changes. Now here you see section number 5, section number 6, the content in these sections have not been changed. Section number 5 has now become section number 3 in Adhiniyam. Evidence may be given of facts in issue and relevant facts. There is no change in contact, not even the illustrations. Section 4 onwards in the Adhiniyam are now called closely connected facts. But you can see corresponding section numbers have changed but the content has not been changed. I hope this document will be of great help to you here. If you find this content useful, please mention that in the comment below. Subscribe to our channel. 
for more such relevant content and information. Now in section number 23 here you see admission in civil cases when relevant. In Adhiniyam, this has become section number 21. However, there is slight change in the explanation over here. Earlier, nothing in this section shall be taken to exempt any barrister, pleader, attorney or vakil. The terms barrister, pleader, attorney or vakil throughout the act has been replaced by the term advocate. So here nothing in this section shall be given to exempt any advocate from giving evidence of any matter of which he may be compelled to give evidence. Now we can move ahead. Section number 24 here is confession caused by the inducement, threat or promise when irrelevant in criminal proceedings. This has become section number 22. But here you see section number 24, 28 and 29 which were related to inducement, threat or promise. They have been combined in one section, section number 22 of Bharatiya Sakshya Sanhita. Then if you see section number 25 in evidence act was confession to police officer not to be proved. This has now become section number 23 and it is confession to police officer. Section number 25, 26, 27 of the evidence act which related to police officer, police custody and how much of information received from accused may be proved. Now that has been combined to become section number 23 of the Bharatiya Saksha Adhiniyam. So here you can see how much in detail I have tried to compare these so that you can quickly go through it, you can quickly understand the changes introduced. Section number 30 which was consideration of proof confession affecting persons making it and others jointly under trial for same offence. This has now become section number 24 and there is further an explanation added to section number 24 in the Adhiniyam. A trial of more persons than one held in the absence of the accused who has absconded or fails to comply with the proclamation issued under section number 84 of Bharti Nagrik Suraksha Sanheta shall be deemed to be a joint trial. So you can go through this document, you can download this document. Here also you will find the link to register for the workshop which is there on Sunday, a detailed comparative analysis of Bharti Nagrik Suraksha Sanheta versus CRPC. Download this document, go through this document in detail and still if you have any doubts you can mention them in the comment below or you can reach out to us on this number. You can also ask your queries related to Bharti Sakshya Sanhita or Bharti Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita in this workshop. If you plan to prepare for government exams in the legal discipline, then Legal B is your one-stop solution to get information related to all these exams. And also at iExam B, we offer courses for preparation of legal government exams. You can check out our website. We at iExam B help you prepare 50% faster with a crisp and concise content. Subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned. Thank you.